Hi everybody, welcome back to Healing with Love. Thank you so much for joining me, joining us, little miss. Okay, so today we're going to be working on the Soul Star Chakra. And before we begin on this one, I, will, I want to make sure that, if, that you've worked on your uh, root chakra and your earth star chakra. So if you haven't watched my videos um, for that, I suggest going into my playlists and you'll find the earth star chakra and the root chakra. Because in order for you know, our branches to reach the heights of heaven, our roots must first touch hell. Uh, so that means that things have to really, you have to really ground yourself deep. As above, so below. So before we begin, I would like to, for you to say out loud in your head, I accept this Reiki from Maricela Mendoza. And I want you to take three deep breaths from the root up to the crown and down. I'm going to start with some clearing of space, just with some quick symbols. Okay, and so this Reiki will reach you in all dimensions of time and space, past, present, future, and beyond, all dimensions. Okay, so I'm going to start with selenite. So we have a few crystals that we're going to use today. We've got selenite, we've got a little moldavite and herkimer diamond, we've got apophyllite, and we've got labradorite. And there's various crystals you can use. You can use numite. You can use Dunbarite, um, but these are the ones I'm using today. So we're going to start by combing the aura. You just want to clear all the chakras. And like I said, make sure that you have worked on the lower chakras. Now the soul star is about four finger widths length from the top of your head. So we have the crown chakra, which is right at the top of your head. So it's like touching here. And then we have four finger widths up. We've got the soul star chakra. Some would say it's the eighth chakra. Some would call it the ninth chakra. I personally call it the ninth chakra. I believe the eighth is your earth star. Then we move up to the higher crown, which is the ninth. And this is the chakra that some would call your connection to the Akashic Records. So it holds all your karmic residue. It holds all your records, really. So the crown chakra, what's the difference between the crown and the soul? The crown chakra is our connection to earth, to everything on Mother Earth, its creatures, its inhabitants, people. Um, whereas the Akashic Records Soul Star Chakra is connected to the universe, all that is. When we open this one, some would call it enlightenment, some would call it samadhi. There's various meanings for this chakra. But when it opens up, that is reaching that enlightened state. You realize that you are infinite and divine. 
opening the chakra cannot be explained with words. I think this is why it took me such a, a, a long time to create this video because I kept trying to explain it into words and it's one of those experiences that cannot be explained. This is the Kundalini awakening. So the, the crown chakra opens up, you have the Kundalini energy moving up and it just pushes the roof off of your soul. Bloop. And it just reaches that soul star and then it's a connection to all that is. And it was just it's just a hard feeling to explain if you haven't experienced it. Okay, so we're gonna start with I'm gonna use labradorite. Now you can use gold labradorite, you can use um, yellow labradorite. I'm gonna just using regular labradorite for this this one. These are all crystals that work very well. The mantra is I transcend and the color is it's an ultraviolet light. It's almost it's white. Uh, but it's it can depending on when it hits the crown, which is a very violet, and it almost becomes a translucent lavender color, almost translucent, op uh, like opalite. Once open, you can't close this one. This is like I said, it's put, it's blowing the roof off of your soul. Once it is open and you have unlocked this door, there's no going back. Once you have seen, there is no unseeing it. And this is why it is imperative to work on the root chakra because it is a very fearful experience when this does open up. Um, when I opened up my soul star, my root wasn't very grounded. It was enough to pass the energy forward so I was very scared of all the things I saw and I saw a lot all my past lives and the past lives are just your lives in other dimensions of time and space everything is now there is no time the illusion of time disintegrates I'm gonna use a pop of light here you see your higher purpose your potential in this lifetime I saw everything that I'm doing now. I saw the merging of my highest self and how I could get there. You begin to vibrate higher. So in some cases, you may even appear physically younger than you really are. And you must master and integrate all your past karma in order to reach this. You must reach that gratitude state. So it's imperative to open up the heart and the crown in unison because we are grateful for every experience. We let go of karma, we forgive. Once we surpass that, pushes that energy forward and it dissolves all the karma. Once you realize that you are responsible for this karma, that you created it, it's easy to dissolve it away. Once you dissolve it, you have access to beings and concepts that were unattainable, un unattainable before. And then your future incarnations are by choice. You decide to come back versus when we are living in the lower energy states, we see this as a punishment. We are here to work on karma and blah, we're being punished. But this, once that opens up, you realize that this was a choice, that this was a gift. And past lives, they can be quite disturbing. This is why it's imperative to work on the lower chakras and work on fear. And this is why this chakra usually stays closed to many people that are doing soul work because they don't know how to let go of the fear. They don't know how to forgive. They don't know how to let go, move past. So they stay stuck. You must let go of old human ideas about yourself and about the planet. You know, this is a cognitive dissonance. It's, uh, it's shocking what you see when, you're, when it opens up. Okay, now I wanna work. So Apophyllite is great for um, telepathy as well. That is a concept that many will not accept because they've never experienced it. But once you start your soul star opens up, you experience telepathy. Um, the higher the chakras, you experience these things. So in here, we've got a little Moldavite and Herkimer Diamond. 
actually I want to do it like this. Okay. And your new psychic abilities can make you feel alone. So a lot of your psychic ability, abilities begin to awaken. And, you know, this is telepathy, a clairvoyance, astral travel, uh, extreme empathy. Um, and you can feel alone because, for one, nobody believes you. Um, but those that have awoken believe you because they also experience this tremendous connection. And it is important to, to release fear. Otherwise, it is a tremendous, painful experience to open up your soul star chakra. It is scary. Many people um, are frightened and they, in, they begin to not just be afraid, but they, they begin to um, see their past lives and the things and the pain and the stuff that they caused people, not realizing that that's the past. This is not now anymore. You know, fear, hate, skepticism, a closed heart, that blocks the soul star. And your abilities begin, you, you might feel like you're going crazy. I know that when my soul star opened up, I immediately, I thought I was going crazy. I was asking people if I died because I was just, it felt like I was, I went from being pixelated and fragmented to vibrating so high that I felt like everything just scattered and everybody's experience is different you're not going crazy not many people will get there so you will feel alone until you connect with those like-minded souls until you find your tribe I'll go back to some selenite because selenite is the great great one for the crown chakra and the soul star So healing the soul star chakra, how do you heal that chakra? How do you activate it? Doing it right now. You clear your karma. Are you in a relationship that is mirroring past relationships? That's karma. You need to move past that. This could be with family. This could be romantic relationships. This can be friends. If you are in relationships that are lowering your vibration, um, unhealthy in any way, possessive jealousy things like that um that's gonna definitely close that soul star it requires a tremendous amount of self-love uh self-love unconditional love to open this chakra gratitude and unconditional love for yourself and if you are in situations where you don't love yourself you're you're not giving yourself the ability to expand And as soon as this chakra is cleared out, you're going to experience an acceleration in your spiritual abilities. So definitely work with your earth star chakra and the soul star chakra in unison to ground your energy. And, and you'll begin to manifest quickly. Things, so you'll be talking about something and then an hour later it appears. So this could be something as simple as you know, I was seeing the number 333 and now you're going to be seeing 333 all day long. So you manifest so quickly because you're vibrating so high. Um, if you've ever seen the movie, What Dreams May Come, any, anytime I talk about my awakening, I always remember that movie because it is how quickly he manifested uh, when he was in the heaven realm, how quickly he manifested. That's how quickly we manifest here. And an underactive uh, soul star, you get headaches, you know you have a purpose, but you don't remember what it is, um, an illusion, the illusion of ego and 3D centered self, you know, 3D centered thinking, skepticism, inactivity, sloth, you know, be, being sloth-like, boredom. Emotionless, so extreme apathy for others, for, for homeless people, for animals, you know, just having this extreme apathy. 
butting into other people's drama and not focusing on self-growth. So butting into other people's relationships, things like that, because that's, that's uh, I guess, entertaining for some. So a lot of reality TV. Overactive. So we're going to work on that. Confusion, feeling spacey and ungrounded, loss of purpose, not focusing on the here and now, focusing too much on past or present, I mean, past or future. Fear, rejecting deep spiritual beliefs is the skepticism of not, not seeing, you know, until you see it, don't believe it until you see it type of thing. Seeing is believing. You can almost feel like your awakening is a vague dream. Like you don't believe it. But then once you've cleared out this chakra, the vagueness goes away and now it's a full-blown reality. So this was the, the difficult part in my journey was just because other people weren't experiencing it doesn't mean that it wasn't real. Now I'm seeing it differently. Now I'm understanding that just because other people have not reached it, and a lot, a lot of people are going to reach it in your particular lifetime, because a lot of people are not on this spiritual journey. So it's imperative to just find your tribe so you know that you're not alone. It's imperative to find your tribe to hone your gifts, such as the telepathy, because, you know, you can have telepathy with people and you don't even connect, you're not, you don't communicate with them. So how will they know that the telepathy is there if you're not communicating? So communication with your soul family is imperative. Finding your soul group is imperative. Um, Yeah, uh, clearing your karma is imperative. And it's easy to clear your karma. All it takes is saying, intention, I clear my karma. So... We are clearing karma right now. The selenite here. We're going to clear out this karma. All the things that you've done in the past, forgive yourself. That's another way to, for, to clear the karma is acknowledging your mistakes, acknowledging the past and what you have brought to your current future. And once open, manifestation begins. You're going to see your highest purpose. You're going to begin to vibrate higher. You're almost going to feel your, vo- your body vibrating. Clairvoyance. You're going to begin to see. You're going to begin to hear. You're probably already hearing the high-pitched frequencies. That's, that's tuning the frequency. You're going to tap into the Akashic Records. And these are your records. You can clear them out anytime. If there's something in the past that you did in a past life and you want it done and cleared, just delete it. Swipe it. Swipe it out. Dissolve it. Disintegrate it. It no longer exists. Dissolve it. Okay, so now we're going to fluff out the aura. Allow that energy to flow through from the earth star to the root, sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, crown, lift up the roof, open it up, 
Remember, cognitive dissonance will close it. What you're seeing is real. These synchronicities are real. These connections are real. Just because they can't remember doesn't mean you don't remember. That's the one thing about this journey. You remember your past lives, so you meet people, and you, you know them. You feel that you know them. Their energy is so familiar. You know them. And in some cases, you can even know their past life name, but they don't remember. But you do, because they're not there yet. doesn't mean you're not there yet. So I suggest journaling. Whenever you meet somebody, who do they remind you of? Write all this stuff in a journal. And eventually, when people begin to awaken, you can go back to your notes. Okay. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment. And I'll try my best to get back to you guys in a timely manner. And we are soul family. So thank you all so much for watching. Namaste, everybody.